What's up guys, it's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi here in Denver, Colorado and today I wanted to go over a new technique that I'm trying for um, breeding lion's mane mushrooms. So last spring and summer I um, had a couple trial runs of lion's manes and I didn't really get any impressive phenotypes. So um, I started growing my Niagara Falls lion's mane, which is you know my favorite strain. I got it from my mentor Anthony in Niagara Falls, New York, and it's really strong. And um, I've tried a couple other lion's manes that are really close and super strong. Um, I got a Mike Tyson lion's mane, really good strain. It forms some nice tendrils. Um, and then I got a, a wild lion's mane from North Carolina that I'm about to throw into the fruiting room. Um, so my goal is to get a bunch of different isolates and breed them over the summer. I'm just looking for a faster strain that still has you know, the robust yields as the Niagara Falls strain. It usually it takes about two weeks in fruiting and I kind of want to cut that down a few days. Um, so my friend Zach from Mushroom Cult gave me the idea to um, elevate my lion's mane mushrooms because one of the issues I think I was having is that when you take a spore print from the lion's mane, a lot of um, bacteria and yeast can get captured in those long tentacles or tendrils. Um, so as the spores are dropping onto the glass, which I use for my spore print or for a petri dish, it would often, you know, just not get me good results. So I elevated it with um, a, a wire mesh and then I placed it on top of the wire with the teeth down and then I put a stack of petri dishes underneath to bring up the the plate to collect the spore print. So for the first, you know, 12 to 16 hours, I collected a spore print on the petri dish and then after that, I started to transfer out um, different plates um, and then I was collecting spores in real time and the idea is that that first, you know, few hours where the spores are dropping, it's going to trigger, you know, all those bacteria and yeast to fall off. And th those I collected on just a blank petri dish. But then, as the spores continue to drop, they'll get cleaner and cleaner. So I started rotating out um, different petri dishes. And I'll show, like, I'll, I'll flip this camera um, around right here so you can see... This is kind of the setup, and these are the uh, potato dextrose plates that I was swapping out. But it's really cool. Look at this um, this dish right here. So you can see all of those various spores began to germinate, and that was about 24 hours in. So um, I'm about to swap out another plate. So this is what I was collecting um, the original spores on and you can see there's a nice you know dispersed print at the top of that dish but I'm going to show you guys what I mean so I'll take the lid off of this one and then over the next couple hours it's gonna drop fresh spores on there and then it gives me a nice dispersed um, real-time germination of these spores so now I'm gonna go ahead and isolate these so I'm gonna transfer them over to some fresh PDA plates and while I'm doing that um, the spores on the other one are gonna be continuing to drop so to make it um, more humid I just placed a tote over the over the lid and I'll show that in the video description picture but I just wanted to show you guys how cool it was to get some real real-time isolates and I'm just gonna label these um, you know maybe one through five and then I'm gonna th throw them on these new dishes so you can see one So I'm just going to label them like one through five right here. And I'm going for 
spores kind of on the outer edge because I know that they haven't germinated yet. The ones in the middle might kind of be like a tight cluster. So I'm gonna just use, you know, my own two eyes. I don't have to use a microscope at this point because they already started to germinate. All right, so these were from about 48 hours in. So you can see that's a single spore isolate, and that's gonna be isolate number one. And I've got another one right here. So then this one's going to be ISO 2. There's a really nice big one right here. So So you can see I can keep going down this list here and it's starting to get a little bit crowded, but um, So that's my new method for lion's mane mushrooms and you can see over the course of those few minutes You know, maybe we got some new spores on there But I'm gonna just throw this um, Tote back over the lid and give you an idea of what I mean. So the tote locks in the humidity and then the spores will drop and then in about an hour I'm gonna pull that plate and um, do some more isolates there. So I'm really excited to try this new technique. Um, I'm sure it's gonna work with you know most mushrooms as long as they can stand on that grid and that way you don't have to go through the cereal dilution um, but you know, it's not a guarantee. There could still be contaminants on this dish. The idea is that there's going to be less. Um, all right guys, so give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're looking forward to more mycology videos like these. Um, check us out on Fungi Fridays, Friday at 4 p.m. I go live, do some really cool techniques like this. And in the springtime, we're gonna be doing some um, some outdoor gardening. So I've got my um, grain spawn, my um, my porcini and chanterelles are almost colonized, and then I've got the king strafaria on the way. So once that goes into grain, I'm gonna um, refrigerate it until I get all my supplies for the raised beds, and hopefully in March or you know April, um, I'll start get going on that. So give us a thumbs up. And um, check out our Etsy. We just got a bunch of fresh cultures on there too. And until next time, much love.